the details of it uh, are, are both um, incredible that it happened, uh, but also it seems to reveal how easy it is for things like this to happen. Tens of thousands of people are just like this 21-year-old. Uh, what are uh, U.S. national security officials concerned about right now? Well, they're concerned about the fact that it appears to have been so easy for this 21-year-old Air National Guard member to not only access these systems and view intelligence that he did not necessarily need for his day-to-day -day job, but also to apparently print them and take them out of the building without anyone noticing. So that, with regard to the procedure, that is pretty concerning. And then, of course, they're concerned about the actual content of what leaked here. It's top secret information having to do with our allies, including South Korea, Israel, and even Ukraine. These documents revealed that the U.S was spying on uh, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky as well as uh, Israeli officials and South Korean officials. And they also reveal really important things about what the U.S. knows about Russian defense ministry officials and, and things that, you know, could lead to access being cut off for the United States. So some of these documents very clearly say that they were sourced to human intelligence, human sources. That is extremely dangerous because these human sources could now be hunted down, U.S. officials say. The eavesdropping uh, points that the U.S. has on the Russians, for example, they might now be cut off. So all of this deeply concerning, and we still don't know for sure just how this uh, young airman was able to get this information out and why, as part of his job as a young, basically, IT person for yeah. the Air National Guard, was he looking at these documents and why did he have access to them? Yeah, I mean, in, in some ways, I'm not entirely surprised that he had access to them, but that someone could just print it and walk away and nobody really notices for months, that seems to me to be just uh, an embarrassing uh hole, gaping hole in the U.S. Uh, control over national security documents. But one of the other subplots of this is the way in which these revelations that you were just talking about, about the Ukraine war, is basically just feeding into this anti-Ukraine sentiment in American politics. Listen to Tucker Carlson on Fox basically defending this leaker accused of leaking national security secrets. The only man who has been taken into custody, or likely ever will be, is a 21-year-old Massachusetts Air National Guardsman who leaked the slides that showed that Lloyd Austin was lying. He revealed the crimes, therefore he's the criminal. That's how Washington works. Telling the truth is the only real sin. I mean, I think a lot of Republicans would like that to be a fringe view, but it is speaking to a part of the Republican Party right now that sees these leaks as a public service in some way? Well, it's playing into the grievance politics that we've seen for the past six years in this country. And I think this is the other subplot here because this allowed us a window into some of the spaces that particularly young white men in this country are inhabiting. And it wasn't just anti-Ukraine. It was uh, anti-black, anti-trans, anti-gay, very pro-gun, if you look at a lot of the paraphernalia that this young man was collecting. Um, but this is just another exclamation point on the point that a lot of the politics uh, right now in, in Congress, for instance, is basically people who are very bombastic, who are about us versus them and grievance politics, and that this is actually having a real impact on our culture and on young people. Well, here's the Marjorie Taylor Greene tweet, and then you can jump in. Uh, she tweeted this week, Jack Teixeira is white, white male Christian, and anti-war, and that makes him an enemy to the Biden administration. She goes on and on criticizing the war in Ukraine, uh, criticizing, basically criticizing NATO, uh, and and getting slammed this morning by Lindsey Graham on uh, this week. What they're suggesting will destroy America's ability to defend itself. There is no justification for this. And for any member of Congress to suggest it's OK to leak classified information because you agree with the cause is terribly irresponsible and puts America in uh, serious danger. Yeah, so what Marjorie Taylor Greene said, I agree with what Heidi, I mean, she invoked in her tweet, he was white, he was young, he was male. Uh, same things that Tucker Carlson said. And I do think that some Republicans, like you mentioned, are trying to take that as a fringe view um, as one way to criticize the Biden administration over this massive leak. They want to put the onus of what happened on the Biden administration and to criticize them over this. But I do think that the majority of members that I've spoken with, Republicans on Capitol Hill, take Lindsey Graham's view, which is that this is a very dangerous thing that has happened and we cannot be defending the leaker. Um, and I think that's going to continue 
to be the message from most <coughs> Republicans. We know that they've been really eager to get way more information on this. They felt very out of the loop on what's been happening with this investigation. And all senators will have a briefing on this leak on Wednesday. Um, and I do think that once that happens and once they gain more information, I think the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world and Tucker Carlson taking this view is very much a very small view on Capitol. You know, I think there, um, there are going to be efforts to compare this guy to Ed Snowden or to Chelsea Manning. But I look at this in a slightly different context. We saw in the aftermath of January 6th, uh, just this year, the arrest of three active duty Marines charged for their participation in um, the uh, in the uh, uprising at the Capitol, the attack on January 6th. I, I think this, there's a bigger concern here that the sort of um, conspiracy theories and or, uh, uh, you know, um, deep state conversation or anti-Ukraine movements, all those pieces have infiltrated the U.S. military and intelligence systems on some level that officials may not completely understand or have a grasp on yet. And, and with, with those three cases, they're in all over the country in places like Camp Lejeune in North Carolina and Pendleton in, in California, um, at, at the NSA at Fort Meade, and now uh, this uh, young man in Massachusetts. There are young men, young members of the military and the intel communities who may not agree with this administration or may have concerns about foreign policy or intelligence applications or the justice system. And to the extent that they're willing to break the rules, to, to break rules around classification, that's a real concern for the government. Yeah, I mean, Natasha, I do wonder, are, is that part of the discussion right now in the intelligence community about what this really means about the types of individuals who are in the military, have access to this, and how they are using these online communities to, in some ways, kind of self radicalize on some of these issues like the war in Ukraine. Yeah, so I would just make two quick points. So the first is that this individual who leaked these documents, even his friends in this group chat said categorically that he is not a whistleblower. He did not want to be a whistleblower. The documents that he was revealing were really only to show his friends essentially what was going on inside the U.S. government and were not meant, according to these people in this chat, to be shared widely. So this individual was not doing this because he wanted to expose broadly to the American public these kinds of things. And then the second, though, I think, to your point, is that the vetting that went into this very young man for him to be able to get a top secret, sensitive compartmented information clearance, that is going to probably be looked at very closely here because did they look at his uh, online history? Did they look at his presence in these chat rooms, which he had apparently been on for at least five years before he got that clearance? All of these things the military is going to have to grapple with, but their their point is that they can't legally kind of monitor all of this stuff domestically, right? Yeah, some of the, some of these yeah. groups are private. Mm -hmm. They're That's on the internet, it. but they're private. Right, and so. so they say that they focus their intel collection efforts internationally, right? But when it comes to that vetting process, I think that's something that's going to be looked at very closely. The good news is that this is egregious enough that it does seem like something's going to happen, that some kind of changes are going to be made. Because we've been talking about these types of breaches, not this specific type, but problems with these types of breaches for years now, and we haven't really seen that yeah. fundamental reform the, change. The embarrassing part of it is that it keeps happening, and it seems like it literally, I mean, it only takes one person in the maybe hundreds of thousands of people who have these kinds of clearances yep. across the federal government.